At the age of 22, Ludwig van Beethoven moved to Vienna his second time. He stayed for more than 35 years until his death in 1827. Here, the German composer created his greatest works, many of them while he was completely deaf. Beethoven was not only known for his musical genius, but also for his irritability. Some even labeled him a misanthrope. Many say, including Beethoven himself, that he was being misunderstood. The traces he left in Vienna are manifold. Here, at the so-called Beethoven Gang, Beethoven's favorite walkway, I'm meeting with Beethoven expert Lisa Nogler Göttler. So I rode the D tram to lovely Neustorf, and I ended up here at the Beethoven Gang. And Lisa, maybe you can explain to us a bit about what makes this place so significant. There are a lot of places around Vienna which are called after Beethoven because he was a lot of times in the nature. He was composing while walking. So would you say that then that Beethoven came here to find peace of mind? He did find peace of mind. He's talking about that in a lot of letters. He definitely recovered in nature. He was inspired of nature. So it's interesting because it's somehow very much at odds with this idea and perception that we have of Beethoven, where he was always choleric and grumpy and fighting people. We, we don't think of him as being this peaceful person who went strolling through nature. So. Oh, there are more sides of Beethoven. Of course, he was crampy too, mm. but there are a lot of reasons for that. I think he was often in love with persons who do not want to marry him. There were people who do not understand his music. He was actually really often ill. He had diseases, especially his deafness. Just a few minutes walk away from the Beethoven Gang, you'll find one of Beethoven's apartments, which has been extended into the Beethoven Museum. In this house, the 32-year-old Beethoven wrote his Heiligenstadt Testament in a state of deep despair. Here in these rooms, he lived 1802, and he was writing here his famous Heiligenstädter Testament. It's so called, it's a letter to his brothers, he never sent the letter. In this letter, he explains his brothers that he accepts this getting deaf mm -hmm. and wants to compose more and more music because he feels um, having music in his, in, 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 inside and he has to write this music down. Speaking of that push, what about, what about love? I mean, people call Vienna a really romantic city. So how did he fare in that respect? Beethoven never was married, but he wanted to be married. He was in love with several women. They were all of the time from aristocratic class and it was not allowed for marrying. So he, they rejected his proposals. Seems very much like in line with what we know about him, of, you know, wanting love, but always fighting back and sort of all these contradictions fueling him. Yes, there is one woman which is very important in his life, Josephine Brunswick. He met her several times. For her was dedicated this letter, the Unsterbliche Geliebte. For my mortal yes. beloved. There are some contractions that helped uh, Beethoven uh, with his deafness, with his getting deaf. He had ear trumpets, and this is maybe a construction on a piano that the sound is coming to him very strong. So it was kind of like an, an echo chamber. What was it that made us consider him a genius? Why was his music and sound considered so groundbreaking? There are a few reasons, um, especially he broke with all the traditional forms. He enlarged symphonies or made them smaller. He, had, he worked with a lot of more musicians in his orchestras. It was different from everything people had listened to before. Ludwig van Beethoven was known for moving several times a year, which was not uncommon for the time. One of the many apartments that Beethoven resided in can be found around the corner from Beethoven Museum, which is now a Heurige called Maya am Fahrplatz. 
On several occasions between 1804 and 1815, Beethoven lived in an apartment in the so-called Pascalati House in the center of Vienna. Nowadays, it is a memorial site containing many personal objects and music listening stations. The composer worked here on his opera, Fidelio, and on piano pieces such as the well-known Fia Elise. I guess a lot of Beethoven fans know that here at the Pascalati House, he composed some of his most well-known works, including his only opera. But why would you say he actually chose to live here? Well, he had a lot of patrons all the time, his financiers. Okay. He composed for them and they uh, donated him the whole life long. I think Beethoven had a lot of bourgeois topics, a liberal mind. He was socialized in Bonn, which was a totally different place to Vienna at that time. And I think he had a problem dealing all the time with aristocratic person. Uh, he had to push boundaries. He was a free spirit, he had to push these boundaries all the time. I guess that the Pascalati House somehow represents all of those complexities in his life because here he had the space to create freely but not without the support from the bourgeoisie and aristocratic elements as well. Vienna was Beethoven's home for 35 years. The city provided him with creativity and inspiration. When he died on March 26, 1827, the Viennese instantly knew what they had lost. Many thousands of citizens lined the streets for the funeral procession to say goodbye to the genius that changed music forever. <laughs>